Welcome back to the Torque Test channel. This is episode 22 featuring the all new Ryobi P262, which is a part of their new OnePlus HP line. The P262 feels to us like Ryobi's first real attempt at entering the arena with the big names among the mid torque players. It offers 600 foot pounds of breakaway torque and finally a brushless motor behind it. Some stats that actually put it in the mix with some of the best out there right now. So today we're gonna test it on our torque dyno, graph its power versus the Milwaukee Gen 2 mid torque, and at the end of this video, rank it on our leaderboard to see where it ranks in the mid-size category. Stick around as this Ryobi honestly performed in a way we haven't seen before, which had us scratching our head, but we'll get into that in a little bit. On this channel, we test modern power tools versus old school torque ratings. Essentially, assuming your father's impact wrench made an honest 450 foot-pounds, what do modern impacts really make compared to that? Manufacturers admit there's really no way to compare torque ratings, so in a world where brands are now advertising 1,715 foot-pounds on a half-inch impact, this is our attempt at leveling the playing field. It won't disprove the brand's ratings, but it will allow us to actually compare power levels across brands for the first time. The P262 is the newest model of Ryobi's newest line of cordless tools. So new, in fact, that when we went into the first Home Depot within driving distance that showed stock around a month ago to pick one of these up, the floor worker didn't know what we were talking about, they didn't have them out on the shelves, and he couldn't find them up on the racks or in the back basically told us to go home. Now we go to Home Depot a lot, as you might imagine running this channel. We always feel a bit like Ron Swanson walking into the power tool hey section. Is there a project you're working on? I know more than you. All right. So here's a hack for shopping at the orange box place. Well, not really a hack since they advertise it everywhere, but use it. It's night and day difference in shopping experience. If you know the item or items you want already, use the curbside pickup on their website. That way, if they have stock in their system and you pay for it, it means someone has to find it because you've already paid for it. And if they can't find it, they have to call around to other locations to see who has stock and maybe route you there. Once they do find it, you get an email and then you show up, put your spot number into your phone and usually wait two to four minutes in our experience and someone pops it in the back of the truck. So that's what we did here. We left the store, ordered it on the phone and lo and behold, they did find one. Home Depot, definitely not a sponsor. Anyways, so what is OnePlus HP? Well, it's Ryobi's new line of brushless tools, which advertises more power, longer run time, and longer motor life, which is pretty typical for most brushless transitions from brush stuff. To us, at face value, it seemed like maybe this was Milwaukee's arm of TTI told the Ryobi arm of TTI it's finally okay to start using some of the M18 fuel parts. So perhaps it was just a M18 mid-torque Gen 1 performance-wise. Well, we can save you a few minutes with that hypothesis as it definitely doesn't perform simply the same as a Milwaukee 2861-20 on the dyno. So for battery, we're using Ryobi's standard 4 amp hour, but apparently there's plenty of options. We're using the one that came with our kit, but among just the 4 amp hour batteries, there's multiple options. PB005 4 amp hour battery, the P108 high capacity 4 amp hour battery, that advertises increasing torque up to 35%. And the PBP004, which also advertises 30% more power, is their high performance battery. Then there's the P197, which is what we're using here. Now, if this was like the Heart Impact, where they told you what battery they used in order to get their torque claims, or even Rigid, which puts the Octane name on the tool, and so you can buy an Octane battery to match for its performance. With Ryobi, we don't get any of that, so we're just using what was given to us. We believe the PBP004 is probably the HP style battery, but it doesn't carry any OnePlus HP branding on it for some reason. It says high performance in the description, and it mentions it's paired well with the HP products, but it wasn't available in our store, it wasn't available online, and when we bought the P262, it was so early that it was only sold as tool only. The Ryobi 4.0 battery is actually bigger than the XC 5.0 we use on most of our standard Milwaukee testing as well, which we think is a bit inconvenient. At 7.2 inches long, it's definitely longer than the 6 inch Milwaukee, but still shorter than the P261 brush version we tested last week. By advertising 600 and 450 foot pounds, it puts it right in there with the Milwaukee M18 Gen 2. 650 550 but it's also around 30 percent cheaper being 159 dollars versus the gen 2's 219. so today it's going to be the p262 versus the 2962 
maybe some model number coincidence. Our first test of the three is a five second forward working torque. The Milwaukee will be shown first each time. So we couldn't have planned that better if we tried. They both made exactly 337 foot-pounds in this five-second forward test. Here's the second of three tests, the 10-second reverse. So on this 10 second test, the Ryobi made less, almost everywhere, 385 foot pounds compared to 324. But that's just this 10 second test. It's really the next test, which is our best case scenario at 15 seconds, where things start to get interesting. Let's take a look. So in this 15 second reverse test, the P262 Ryobi actually keeps up with the Gen 2 Milwaukee pretty well. We think the five to eight second range roughly being equivalent, and that's probably where you're gonna be using this impact a lot on tough bolts. But up to the 15 second mark, it's a 451 versus 426 foot pound difference. But given its price, when you're looking at at least the numbers we're showing here, it's pretty impressive that the Ryobi is able to keep up with the latest and greatest from Milwaukee in this category, even if being a bit longer. So you might be saying now, TTC, that seems to perform well, but what is this never before seen performance you were talking about at the beginning of the video? Well, this is the only impact wrench we have ever tested on this channel that seems to make its power based on random chance. It feels like it has to pull a tarot card when you pull the trigger to decide what it wants to make. Here's a clip as an example. Not doing it again. I refuse. I refuse to be treated this way by this impact wrench. It was doing 360 something and then you had like five seconds ago. I know, that's bad. On a 10 second test? It made 316 on a 15 second test. Oh, that's right. How the does this work out? So, yeah, eventually we weren't having it with this impact wrench. We had already tested it 15 second best case scenario multiple times, getting 316. 345 sort of all over the place so after topping off the battery as usual we moved on to some other tools we wanted to test that day and then came back to this 10 second test here it was already making 366 only six seconds into the test making more in six seconds than the tool was previously making in 15 seconds even though each time we used a fully charged battery we continued to test the tool a handful of times that day and the most it ever made in a 15 second test was the 426 foot pounds we showed on the graph. But to be honest, it makes anywhere between 316 to 426. No other impact we've tested does this. Some have become 
damaged, like the Harbor Freight no longer make the same power. Most like our Gen 2 Milwaukee makes the same every time. This one goes back and forth for no real reason that we can understand. It could be 30 seconds between runs or an hour. It doesn't make a difference. At least we didn't run into the trigger issues like we did with the P261. But we did notice the anvil got beat up more than average. Our M18 Gen 2 has twice as many runs as this tool does on it and use at home and its anvil looks newer. And the P261's anvil looks night and day versus its brother here after testing. So with all that said, let's take a look at the ranking. So we're using all the torque values we recorded for this video. So that's 337, 324, and the 426 gets an asterisk because that's the most we made, but who knows what you're actually gonna get each time you pull the trigger. Then its length is pretty long in the category compared to Milwaukee, but short among the budget impacts at 7.2 inches. So that earns it 59.2 points. Then for its torque claim, we use max torque because that's kind of what we're testing more than a nut busting or breakaway. That's 450, which is sort of low in the category for how much power it made, which gives it a 95%, which is the highest we've seen in the mid torque category, at least when it makes that power. And then it also costs uh, pretty low, $159, which gives it a high value score of 40.2 points. So what is that total and where does it put it? 303.4 points, which is enough for second place. And to be honest, if we held out for a better max torque, which is our second test rating, it probably could have taken the top spot. Or if we used one of its worst runs, then it probably would have been below the Milwaukee Gen 1 and around the heart in rating wise. We think at $159, the performance of this tool or the actual potential for performance of this tool is actually very high. This is a type of tool that based on your guys' feedback and how it works for you, Maybe we'll revisit and buy another one in six months or a year and use maybe whatever battery you suggest and see how it does. In our next cordless episode, we're going to be reviewing the new Makita mid-torque. It's kind of like a chunky mid-torque, but with really high specs. Just came out. We just picked it up. We'll let you know how it does. Subscribe if that sounds like something you want to see. Thanks for watching.